Yeah, this is Billiam. Living in Orlando, I like Disney enough, but I'm definitely the kind of Disney person who leaves my appreciation for it at the parks. Mickey Mouse is not allowed to step foot in this house. From the Disney Pixar catalog, I definitely have my favorites. Beauty and the Beast for its music, Aladdin and the Lion King are just nostalgic perfection, but one that stands out in its own unique way has always been Lilo and Stitch. A surprisingly raw film about two sisters trying to make it together after the death of their parents. With open emotional wounds and character acting that reminds you the best film performances haven't been given by the greatest screen actors that come to mind, but by an animator with a pencil who can perfectly perfect every micro detail of a performance right down to the rhythm and pacing of every finger movement, tear, and blink. And it's now that I suddenly remember the film also stars a little blue alien designed to destroy cities who also loves Elvis Presley. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, Stitch is fun. Out of all of the minion-like characters, Stitch is probably the best. An alien experiment designed to be evil, turned good by a young girl who has trouble fitting in, is a really sweet story. But Stitch is to Lilo and Stitch as the second half of Up is to Up. It's very fun and enjoyable, but it's definitely not the soul of the film. But Stitch is charmingly mischievous and evil and totally unforgettable, therefore very marketable. Stitch was Disney's first major film post Shrek and hating Disney was all the rage so Disney started dunking on Disney with an ad campaign having Stitch invade recent Disney films and I don't know just be a jerk to everyone <laughs> It's hard to come up with a character who has lasting and universal appeal like Stitch. And if you look through Disney, not Pixar's 2000s catalog, they weren't exactly on a roll with big hits. Even if some of their films have been more fondly remembered looking back, Stitch was the perfect mix of 2000s edge and Disney charm, but he was really all they had for that entire decade. Uh, so they had to keep Stitch's brand afloat with lots of sequels. So I wanted to take a look at the Stitch franchise catalog because who the hell is that? And we'll find out coming up next. Are you ever shopping online and you choose not to save money? I'm sure you do. Stop it. That's very silly of you. If you want to stop not saving money while shopping online, I suggest you check out today's sponsor, Honey. Honey is a free browser extension automatically activated at checkout. Billy, don't you dare think of not saving money. Allow me to use my powers to search the internet for the rarest of coupon codes within seconds. I wanted to cover up some of my audio foam in the office here, so I went to Vapor95 to find a cool blanket. But Honey stopped me right before checkout. I have saved you 1438. I didn't wake up today knowing that I was going to save $14.38. $14.38 is a lot of money that can go towards a lot of really important things. Honey has saved over 17 million members, over $2 billion from over 30,000 stores, including GameStop, Etsy, Uber Eats, and even AliExpress. If you don't have Honey, you're straight up missing out on free money. So go to joinhoney.com slash billiam. Honey takes only a few seconds to install and you'll be doing me and yourself a huge favor. Thank you again to Honey for sponsoring this video. All right, Stitch the Movie, released in 2003 straight to DVD. I remember wanting to see this so badly. Disney Channel back in the day, and I think still to this day, doesn't really have traditional advertising. Rather, they choose to advertise their own stuff. Mike's Super Short Show was some segment where Disney tricked an eight-year-old desperately wanting to act into becoming a salesperson. All about new Disney DVDs, right at the height of Disney's straight to DVD sequel rampage. Bambi from 1942, well, can you think of a better time? Time for Bambi 2 than 2006. Cinderella, it's now a trilogy. Fantasia, we made 2,000 of them. Stitch the Movie was made on a TV budget because it's not really a movie, it's an extended TV pilot. A pilot is supposed to sell an audience and a studio on a show, but Disney's next level because they literally sold you a movie that's just selling a show. If you take a step back, Mike's super short show is a show selling you a DVD that's selling you a show. What's next, Disney? A movie franchise based on selling you the next movie? Infinity Stone. One of the six Infinity Stones. Infinity Stones. At the end of Lilo and Stitch, Lilo and her sister Nani have a new Ohana. Ohana means family. Family means no one gets left behind or forgotten. Jumba, the mad scientist who created Stitch, and Pleakley, the clueless Earth expert, move in with the sisters. Which is this really nice thematic punctuation to the film. A strange group of people 
or weird f***ing aliens could absolutely be your family if you're willing to call them that. However, Stitch is having trouble fitting in. Lilo encourages Stitch to make friends when she tells him that the Hawaiian community uses the word cousin to refer to many people. Everyone is one big happy ohana, however, Stitch just goes full cringe and starts going up to random strangers trying to be friends with them. Like what the heck dude, you're just like the hundreds of messages I receive a day that just say, hey, Hey, what? Meanwhile, we see Gantu, the big, bad, scary villain of Stitch, the first movie, has been tasked with finding the rest of Jumba's experiments. Jumba is captured by Gantu, the big dummy, and Lilo, Stitch, and Pleakley find all of the experiments stored as dehydrated pods. Well, Stitch is number 626. These must be the other 625! I've always been curious if the name Experiment 626 was given to Stitch in the original film to plan out a franchise. Never, ever! Make more than one? Or if it was just a convenient detail Disney latched onto when thinking of sequels. What you see before you is the first of a new species. I call it Experiment 626. The number 626 itself is a reference to the Planck constant, an equation used to calculate energy generated by a wavelength, which feels like a clever nod to surfing. Gantu's patron is Jumba's unmentioned ex-partner who helped them create the experiments, Dr. Hamster Veal. The aliens and spaceships in Lilo and Stitch all have this aquatic-like design, which complements the movie's tropical setting. Dr. Hamster Veal is just a f you to that design philosophy. He's a reject Captain Underpants character. I think it's the letter H on his little cape that just is the final nail in the coffin for me. Ah, Dr. Jacques Van Hamster Wheel. Hamster Wheel, it is Hamster Wheel! Gantu is such a menacing villain in the first film, and here he's kind of demoted and promoted to a lovable, incompetent idiot. Big scary guy getting bossed around by small tiny thing. On paper, the dynamic works, but in an attempt to get Jumba to reveal the other experiment's location. Eh, I'm not afraid of torture. Accepting maybe a little bit. Hamster Veal and Gantu unleash Experiment 625. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you telling me the greatest game of all time was based on a TV show? Don't ever let me hear you say licensed games are bad again. They all average out to be great because Experiment 625 Sandwich Stacker is a 1 million out of 10. They expect 625 to torture Jumba, but he's not about that. As the predecessor to Stitch, he has all of Stitch's powers, but he's just a lazy jerk who wants to do nothing but make sandwiches all day. A personality which is nailed perfectly by Rob Paulson. You have egg salad? Nope, only cheese. Have you not been paying attention? However, Gantu in 625's dynamic is similar to Gantu in Hamster Veals, but it works so much better. The joke is people pronounce his name as Hamster Wheel, but that's not necessarily enough material for two seasons, is it? But luckily, Hamster Veal doesn't really get too much screen time in the show, so it's kind of okay. Also, if you disagree with me about disliking Hamster Veal, consider this. Meanwhile, Stitch and Lilo, wanting to help Stitch meet his family, unleash Experiment 221, an electrical monster designed to force me to make the comparison to Pokemon. Experimon! Ready for the experiment rap? One, two, three, four, five. 221 goes on a rampage, and Lilo and Stitch do their best to catch him because you gotta catch them all. Lilo and Stitch rescue the experiments in Jumba from Hamster Veal, causing the dehydrated pods to fly all over Hawaii, waiting to be activated as soon as they get wet. Gantu and 625's ship crashes, leaving them stranded. Hamster Veal is arrested, but is granted Skype privileges to coordinate with Gantu to capture the other experiments before Lilo and Stitch. And Lilo and Stitch help 221 find a purpose, staying in this rundown lighthouse all day by himself in order to power the light bulb. How wholesome. They even give him a name, Sparky, which lays the groundwork for the rest of the show. The series itself is episodic, with Lilo and Stitch finding a new experiment or two every episode and trying to capture it before it causes too much trouble. Part of what I like about Lilo and Stitch as a series is how the small town feel of Kauai translates to the show. We get recurring locations and characters like the cafe, the beach, the neighborhood Myrtle, Lilo's bully who is the worst creature ever put to screen lives in, and once the experiments find a home, it's not uncommon that we get to see them again because they're just hanging around. I find Stitch and Lilo to be such a great pair. Stitch is so chaotic and Lilo is so lovingly odd, but also incredibly nice. You're one of a kind. Like... Frankenstein. Oh. 
It's surface level Lilo and Stitch. Lilo and Stitch are two outsiders who are lucky enough to have found each other, and that dynamic really is charming and sweet, even without the heavier aspects of the film to support it. The stars of the show are all of the different experiments, and that mantra of Ohana, meaning family, motivates Lilo and Stitch to find all of the other experiments who they refer to as Stitch's cousins. All right, let's highlight some experiments. You got Richter, a dude that looks like one of those big old thick old lizards who can cause earthquakes with his tail. Kick an early prototype for wide Kylo Ren who just wants to beat the heck out of everyone. Mr. Stenchy, a gentle reminder that the cutest, sweetest thing on this planet, my cat Pumpkin, can also be very smelly. Spooky, just an all around great design who makes people see their worst fears. Experiment number seven, Gigi, it's just a dog. Good to know sh posting has been around for a while. Lilo ends up deciding that the perfect place in the world for Gigi is staying at Myrtle's house. Hey. There's Lilo. Should we invite her? Weird low? No way. Why would we want her to come? F Myrtle. All my homies hate Myrtle. There's 627, the upgraded Stitch that Jumba makes because he gets disappointed that his scientific experiments peaked at Stitch. There's one episode with two experiments turned criminals named Bonnie and Clyde. Their bad influences on Lilo and Stitch and encourage them to hashtag do crimes. But Lilo is already a criminal. Hawaii has some of the most strict laws on the planet about introducing invasive species. And who do you think is gonna do more damage to the Hawaiian environment? This little frog? Or the guy who shoots melting hot plasma from his nose. Or maybe the one who opens black holes. Or maybe the one that turns everyone into babies. It's gonna be really hard for your native species to reproduce when they're not reaching sexual maturity. And speaking of sexual maturity, I hate that there's a girl version of Stitch that Stitch is clearly attracted to. <laughs> How? Angel has the power to brainwash people with her music, but it's stated that Stitch and 625 are immune, so this is just Stitch being... I do, however, appreciate the strategic avoidance of calling Angel Stitch's cousin. Budget boo. I don't want to see Angel licking Stitch. That is just not something I'm interested in. And now I'm hyper fixated on the recurring jokes that they disguise Stitch as a dog and Stitch is obsessed with red rockets. She feels like such a blatant merchandising creation. Stitch is a part of Disney's popular merchandising characters. So why not have a pink version who perks out her chest, has eyeliner and makes Stitch very, very... It doesn't really feel like the show's writing staff even liked her that much because she's captured by Gantu in her debut episode and not seen again until she's rescued by Stitch in the second to last episode. I'll be home later! What's wrong? Stitch. Pleakley and Jumba add energy. Nani and David provide a much needed grounded perspective. And I just love 625 and Gantu. Ah, oh, that is so pathetic that you have to blame me for your screw up. Gantu himself is such a dweeb, but he's also this hulking monster. Toasted bacon and raisin, just like Mumu used to make. Watching this, I always wondered why Stitch just didn't, like, murder Gantu, but we actually get an explanation for that. Stitch tries to murder Gantu at one point, but Lilo sees good in everyone. She saw it in Stitch, she sees it in the experiment, and she sees it in Gantu. At its best, this show is incredibly feel-good, and even maybe a little hopeful. However, they do my least favorite thing any movie-to-TV adaptation does and turns every single memorable line Stitch had in the movie, to a catchphrase, I'm fluffy. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, but I do appreciate my personal favorite Stitch catchphrase. <laughs> Notably, there's a few really out of place crossover episodes with Kim Possible, The Proud Family, American Dragon, and Recess. No attempt is made to match the art styles, not even with shading. But we do get this very notable scene where Sugar Mama from The Proud Family beats up Gantu. So it's worth it. Also, I think they planned the Kim Possible crossover just for this one interaction. What's the sitch? No, who's Stitch? No, 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 what's the sitch? The show got a finale movie, Leroy and Stitch, which takes place after all of the experiments are found and given a home. It's up to Lilo, Stitch, and his 625 cousins to save the galaxy. <laughs> Hamster Veal escapes and makes an army of evil Stitches named Leroy. I have taken over the Galactic Alliance using my army of clones named Leroy. Leroy? What's wrong with Leroy? Nothing. I like it. God, Lilo was so f 
fucking nice. It ends with a big final battle where all the experiments escape. Gantu and 625 have a redemption arc, which is sweet. And Lilo finally realizes she's never given 625 a name, which leads to this really satisfying my curiosity moment where 625 goes full stitch for the first time. Lilo names him Ruben. It's f***ing cute as shit. Overall, the ending's nice, but I do wish Gantu and 625 had a different ending. The, the film gives you the idea that they're gonna open up a sandwich shop together in Gantu's crashed ship, but Gantu gets granted a captainship from the Galactic Federation, which is just so much more boring than the other option. Also, I know this movie is rated G, but I think the MPAA would have let it slide if you just slipped in a quick minute and a half long death scene for Myrtle during the final battle. Overall, the show's a very charming continuation of the movie, and if you liked it as a kid, it's still fun to revisit now. Gantu in a Hawaiian shirt is pretty rad. Before Leroy and Stitch, we actually got a proper direct-to-DVD sequel, Lilo and Stitch 2, Stitch Has a Glitch. It's kind of written as if the TV show doesn't exist, but if you're a fan of the show, it could take place beforehand. It's fine, it's just not as heartfelt as the original and not as fun as the series. The animation budget seems to be more on par with the original film, and it does try to recapture some of that melancholy tone of the original. So I don't know if the original is a 10 out of 10. Uh, this is like a six out of 10. All right, here's where we get weird. Stitch, the anime. Produced by Studio Madhouse, it serves as a spinoff to the series. Essentially, we're told in the first episode, Lilo went, I don't wanna play with you anymore. Because she has a boyfriend. That's the explanation we're given. So Stitch is now off throwing a temper tantrum. Gantu and 625 are now evil again, and Stitch lands in a fictional Japanese island where he meets a young girl named Yuna, who befriends Stitch after he crashes. It's a pretty energetic, cartoonish anime. The first season has Hamster Gill back as the main villain, but season two and three introduces some new characters, including Experiment Zero, the Shadow the Hedgehog of Stitch, and generic Sailor Moon villain Delia, who's after the generic anime super secret power Power source held inside of Stitch. This all seems pretty wild. I think this might deserve its own video at some point. Angel is a pop singer now, so I'm sure I'm gonna love it. But if you're trying to cry for a decade straight, there's an episode where Stitch is reunited with an adult Lilo. The whole episode, Stitch is running around with Lilo's daughter who looks just like her, but we don't realize it's her daughter. We also find out that Lilo didn't try to ditch Stitch for her boyfriend, but rather they just had a miscommunication when they were trying to meet up. And then they went years without seeing or talking to each other. Are you telling me Lilo couldn't just call Jumba and Bleakly to find out what they were up to? There's also another more recent series called Stitch and I produced for Chinese audiences, but unfortunately I can't find too many clips from the show, but it does look interesting nonetheless. A uh, big Stitch? As far as continuations for Disney properties go, I think Lilo and Stitch has probably had the most fun continuations. And the themes of family and Ohana throughout the series actually work surprisingly well for a monster collecting show. The show's pretty good, even if it forced me to think about Stitch having sex. Ugh. So anyways, I'm tired, I'm stressed. I'll see you next week.